Hi, so in this video we are going to learn about the proof of unit circle method of remembering the values of sine and cosine. So these are the values which you get in unit circle. Just to revise the method I am going to explain you again but in short. So we had a circle and then we drew some line in such a way that this angle was 45 degrees and this angle was 30 degrees and this angle was 60 degrees and the values of cosine and sine were actually the values of the coordinates of these points right the coordinates of this point were 1 and 0 because the circle is of unit radius and the coordinates of this point were 0 and 1 and to find the coordinates of these points we have written numbers from 1 to 3 like this and then we wrote 1, 2 and 3 like this then we divided all these numbers by 2 and then we took the square root of the numerator so square root of 1 was 1 square root of 3 will be square root of 3 this will become root 2 and root 2 and this will become square root of 3 and square root of 1 will be 1 itself and this got modified to 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 so all the x values actually denotes the cos theta and all the values of y denotes the sine theta and then we reflected all these values across the y axis changing the signs of x because in this quadrant all the values of x will be negative and then again we reflected all these values of the upper semicircle across the x axis and again we change the signs keeping the signs of the values of x and y in those particular quadrants in mind right so that is how we get this circle and this circle actually represents the values of cos 30 sin 30 cos 60 sin 60 till 360 degrees in this particular video we are going to learn the logic behind this method so let me erase all this and now we are going to take one angle each time and learn how these values actually come so let's first start with 45 degrees that means this angle this angle was 45 degrees and the values of cos 45 and sin 45 are both equal and they are 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2. So this is the drawing where this angle actually represents 45 degrees. right? If this is 45 degrees then if I draw a perpendicular from this point to this line that means this is 90 degrees then this angle will also be 45 degrees because sum of all the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. In that case, this triangle, if I call it as O, A and B, this triangle becomes an isosceles right angle triangle. That means the length of this side will actually equal to the length of this side. O, B will be equal to A, B. Why? Because these two angles are 45 degrees each. So their opposite sides will also be equal. So OA is equal to OB. And now we can apply the Pythagorean theorem in the right angle triangle. The theorem says hypotenuse square is equal to perpendicular square plus base square. The value of hypotenuse is 1 because this is an unit circle. The circle with radius equal to 1. So this will become 1. And if we assume OA is equal to OB is equal to A, then this 1 will be equal to A square plus A square. Right? So 1 is equal to 2A square. From here we can get the value of A square is equal to 1 by 2 or the value of A will be equal to plus minus 1 by root 2. But since this value is in first quadrant both X and Y are positive that means the coordinate of this point will actually be equal to 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2. Right? And if we talk about this point they will also be 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2 but the values of x coordinate in this quadrant are negative so it, the values of cos 90 plus 45 that is 135 will be minus 1 by root 2 and the value of sine 135 will be plus 1 by root 2 right and if we reflect the values over here this will be minus 1 by root 2 and minus 1 by root 2 and the values of this coordinate will be 1 by root 2 x positive minus 1 by root 2 because y will be negative over here 
right and that is how you get all these values and now let's talk about the 30 degrees that is this angle so let me erase all this so here we have one more unit circle and I have drawn two lines in orange where this angle is 30 degrees and this is also 30 degrees that means this total angle is actually 60 degrees and now if you see this triangle properly this particular triangle properly this side is equal to this side both of them are the radius of the circle unit circle right so that means these two angles will also be equal and they will be equal to 180 minus 60 that is 120 divided by 2 is 60 degrees these two angles will also be 60 degrees and the length of all these sides will be all equal and they will be equal to the radius of the circle which is equal to 1. Let me name these points. This is the center of the circle which is O and this be the point A and let this be the point B and this point let us call it as C. So now if we take triangles OAC and triangle OCB OA is equal to OB which is the radius of the circle which is equal to one unit OC is equal to OC the common line and angle AOC is equal to angle BOC both are equal to 30 degrees from here we can say that line AC is equal to line BC and this will be equal to 1 by 2 because we know that the length of the line AB is equal to 1 and if we take triangle AOC this is actually a right angle triangle this angle is 30 degree angle AOC is 30 degree and angle OAC is 60 degrees so angle OCA will be actually 90 degrees right so triangle AOC is a right angle triangle where angle OCA is 90 degrees that means OA square is equal to AC square plus OC square. The value of side AC is 1 by 2 that we already know. The value of OA is 1, the radius of the circle. So 1 square will be equal to AC square that is 1 by 2 whole square plus OC square. Right? So from here OC square is equal to 1 square minus 1 by 2 square that is 1 minus the square of 1 by 2 is 1 by 4 that is 3 by 4 right so from here OC is actually equal to root 3 by 2 so this is the value of x coordinate of point A and the value of y coordinate of point A is 1 by 2 and that is why the coordinate of point A will be equal to root 3 by 2 and 1 by 2 and that is what we have got using the method of unit circle and if we reflect this the value of x will become negative and y will be positive over here and which is the value of cos 150 and sin 150 and in this quadrant the value of x and y will both be negative that means both sine and cos will be negative over here and here we will get the value of cos as positive and sine will be negative because in the fourth quadrant the value of x is positive and the value of y is negative right so this was the proof behind the value of cos 30 and sine 30 and now let's try to find the values of cos 60 and sin 60 that means of this angle this can also be found using the same logic it will be something like this where this angle is 60 degrees and then this angle will be 30 degrees and this angle will also be 30 degrees so total it will be total it will be 60 degrees and this angle will be 60 and this angle will also be 60 this is exactly same as 30 degrees right so if we call this triangle as OAB and this point if we call as C as we have done in the case of 30 degrees AC will be equal to CB which is equal to 1 by 2 right and OC square will be OB square minus CB square which will be equal to 1 minus the value of CB is 1 by 2 and the square of 1 by 2 is 1 by 4 so 
OC square from here we will get as 3 by 4 and if we take the square root on both sides OC will be equal to root 3 by 2 right that means the coordinates of point B which are CB and OC they will be 1 by 2 and root 3 by 2. So the value of cos 60 will come as 1 by 2 and the value of sin 60 will come as root 3 by 2 and which are the values over here. These are the values of cos 60 and sin 60 and by reflecting those values across y axis and x axis we can get the other values of cos and sin. Right? So this was the proof behind the unit circle method after this we are going to get into the serious trigonometry so keep watching math math and bye bye till then